Africa or uh, if you go a little bit more, more north in the... Hello subscribers! This time around in your envelope you'll find two different coffees hailing from Colombia and Brazil. It is from Duva Rojas and his brothers in Colombia that you'll find the so-called Duva Rojas. They decided some years ago to name the coffee after one of the brothers, but it's actually from all three brothers' farms. This coffee is, uh, I think, a very unique Colombian coffee that has a lot more depth than what I typically find in Colombian coffees. Duva and his brothers grow on some of the most steep uh, hillsides that I've ever encountered going to origin. They grow a large range of varieties there and their processing is also something where they experiment quite a lot with how they can change the flavors in the coffees using different fermentation techniques and finishing with a very meticulous drying process. When I went to visit Duvarojas last year in Colombia, he was really proud showing us the drying tables they have. It's a very nice, uh, very clean and uniform space for drying the coffee. And it ensures that the quality that we're getting from him and his brothers is really, really high without that typical Colombian woodiness that you'll quite often find if the coffee hasn't been dried very carefully. Duva was also really proud showing us some of the things he's doing with uh, fermentation. And I really remember him sticking some of that juicy, fermenty, gooey, parchment-covered coffee into our hands and smelling that it smelled incredible, like passion fruit and tropical fruit from the actual fermentation. That doesn't always translate into the green beans, into the actual coffee. With his coffee, I definitely find a lot more like tropical fruit, almost like a little bit more complexity and uh, almost like a spicy note to it sometimes. I think it's a really, really nice, very deep and complex coffee that has a lot to offer. Um, the more I drink it, the more I taste it, the more I find these different layers in that coffee. So I hope you'll enjoy that one. The other coffee you're getting is one that is very close to our hearts because it is from the Terra farm. It's the farm that we, together with Vista Hermosa in Guatemala, has been working with for the longest time. We started buying Terra even before we actually had this company because it was one of the coffees that I used in my blend for winning the World Barista Championship many, many years ago back in 2006. And since then, we've kept a very close cooperation with Daterra, uh, di actually going into having our own plot at the farm. Daterra reached out to us a number of years ago and asked if we would be interested in having our own little plot of land at the farm. This is something we found really interesting because we know that it's required that you are there every day throughout the year to maintain a farm. So we don't have any desire to own our own farm anywhere where we can't be present. But to do this kind of joint cooperation with a farm that we've been working with for a number of years was really interesting. The coffee you're getting is actually from a neighboring plot to our own plot at the farm. And it's processed as an anaerobic fermentation. The varieties in this coffee are actually new to me. They're called, I think, Akawa and SH3. And the Akawa, or Asawa, if it's pronounced that way, is a hybrid of Mundunovo and Sachimo, two more, as you can almost say, not indigenous, but more traditional uh, Brazilian varieties. And it's a good example of some of the stuff that the Terra is doing, finding new varieties and experimenting. What makes this coffee unique, though, is the anaerobic fermentation. The Terra puts the whole cherries into big steel tanks where they then seal them off, uh, so oxygen is pushed out by the carbon dioxide emitting from the cherries. After that, the coffee is dried on raised beds instead of the traditional patios and not using the traditional uh, mechanical dryers that they often finish the drying process with. It is processed at their micro mill that Datura has made, used for their masterpiece series. So this is like the high-end stuff coming out of Datura. It seems that the SH3 is a Katoai that has been modified with a leaf rust resistant gene from Coffee Liberica and developed by the Campinas Agronomic Institute. In the flavor of this one, you'll find a, a marriage between like a, a certain toffiness and molasses 
a little bit of like a nuttiness, but in a very nice pecan nut kind of way. But then this also has some more tropical fruits and a little bit like a liquor feel to it. Together with the Duva Rojas, we think this is a nice contrast of two coffees from the South Americas that are very interesting, very nice and different. Um, hope that you'll enjoy it and I'll see you in 2021.